good morning everybody uh, and the dignitaries on the dais uh, in orissa uh, there is always a, there is something called body language to governance we have an absolute open mind to have a dialogue with all the stakeholders in whatever we do i think you must they say they, i think i have been attending uh, every every conclave uh, connected with this particular thing the state has got a, a kind of approach to celebrate some round figure okay you reached 50 years of independence you will celebrate then you reach 75 you celebrate you to have to find a reason to celebrate all the time i will also read out with a budget of 1 crore our total budget was about 1 crore rupees in 1936 there was no separate allotment for the development work in 99 2000 we had a budget size is 11801 which we are our Uh, main budget is 230000 crore on 2324 uh, then own revenue 2421 crore in 99 to 2000 215500 state plan outlay has uh, gone many times up from the 2891 crores to the 125000 and then we have not taken a ways and means advance for the last 18 years that mean we have no overdraft we don't borrow much and then our capital outlay investment in orissa is the only state in the country to be frbm compliant every year since its enactment in 2005 dr kundu mentioned in fact i was uh, really uh, it was a very good information for also we are also studying the migration pattern we are dealing with that we have a data recently looked at it that mean more people came less people went back i will look at it uh, in a different way if you look at the corona period if you are the regular watching of tv when millions of our laborers were walking in the national highways of this country there is something terribly wrong with us let me tell you the people in a in a in a economy capital forms a function that's what called a relative functions labor is an important component but that labor was almost treated as a use and thrown kind of commodity during at least that two weeks that was the visual 12 people killed in maharashtra i want to tell you there is one state where no labor irrespective of whether he is born in chatisgarh or jharkhand or west bengal or orissa who has not walked in the highways that state is orissa they were received in the border put in the vehicle whether it's a bus whether it's a car whether it's a jeep or the minivan every border they were received by our officers not allowed to walk and then every time we don't receive our migrant laborers with the balloons and the carpet in the railway station they we, we don't even know when they came when they go but we made it a point on seeing that people are walking in the national highway we put the senior is officers to receive them in the railway station the evening we appointed her as an officer to coordinate at the, uh, at the kurda station where the we received something around 9 lakh people each one of them in whichever way they came they were received we made it a point to put the doctors in the railway station we transported them with the dignity they were kept in 14 days why i am emphasizing that growth and development is not statistics alone the demography of the development demography of growth i am so happy that this can currently always talks about it i remember in 2016 bills were announced that is actually 30 years time 2030 so then i was at that time development commissioner my officer said that niti ayog the planning commission went and niti ayog came and then it is being monitored by the niti ayog what do we do that so i had a feeling that uh, we will call something called sdg plus that when when you look at the 2030 we will start looking at it 2036 because it makes a great sense for me locally because i am talking about a history 1936 to 236 yes century of orissa looks very nice and the, if you demography and the economy if you really look at it is that economy or the finance is the function of the geography or is it the function of the demography it is both it is both if you look at it states like orissa this is a very classical story of the conversation between what we call as a center and the fringes in the developmental conversation is always there is a something about the marginality there is something about the voice of the voiceless some people are voiceless there are concealed communities there are communities whose existence you don't even recognize 
So those concealed communities, that fringes, a state is carved out of. Can you imagine 62 type of tribes who belong to different linguistic families? Talking different language is something different. We have a also Asiatic, who are the subgroup of the Australo Australite, and so North Mundarian, South Mundarian. We have a Dravidian population. We have an Indo-Aryan population. Different linguistic family coexisting. So it will have its own impact. If you really look at it, the dichotomy of the growth is that the most underdeveloped, most poverty stricken, the names, some of the names mentioned by uh, Dr. Kundu is an area which is endowed with a great amount of natural resources. There may not be a one-to-one -one relation between the resources and the poverty living of a particular people. That is the reason some of the areas which we have the maximum coverage. So that is where the body language and the intention of the governance come into picture. Now renamed it Swabhima Nanjal. Self-esteem, self the area which, is, which is considered to be cut-off area, now is a Swabhima Nanjal. So that is the, how this, uh, apart from the, the uh, classical uh, approach or the economic approach to the growth, there is a governance is a very, very important uh, component I consider. What is the body language? What is the intention? What is the approach of the governance and political and the leadership, the bureaucratic, as well as the, all the stakeholders? We actually approach, for a small example, sometime in 2016, we planned in a small way, involving all the volunteer sector, NGOs, grassroots people who are working with the tribals, uh, academic institution, the uh, Navakrishna Chaudhary Institute. We all joined together and das, uh, talked about how to bring the millet to the forefront. We came out with the Orissa Millet Mission sometime in 2016-17. Then Government of India officials studied Niti Ayok uh, uh, again and again uh, appreciated. Government of India appreciated. In 2018, after the Orissa sex women, Government of India recommended this model and declared the National Year of Millet in 2018. Then India made a move with the Zambia and other countries, repeated attempt, and finally UN General Council adapted, and then 2023 is the International Year of Millet. And we had an international convention recently. It may be a small millet, but then the grind starts from a place like Orissa, and we are so happy that what we prioritized. For example, take a small example. The margin versus the center. This particular articulation. So we made a planning and convergence department. In the process, first convergence department of this country born. And then we now converge with the money in the district mineral fund, Ombudsman fund. Money comes from any source. Money is money. So we converge our idea and resources, our attitude, everything. And that's what we made a statement that the acronym remains, but the attitude changes. PNC as an acronym remained there. But the, instead of coordinating, we started converging. So in the process, we have been very closely working with the NGO sector, be it this 2036 also, because we are already working at a back end. Certainly, when we formally go for a plan, uh, we have a dream. And uh, Chief Minister has been often telling about it. At that time, we will certainly have a, the way forward, whatever you are discussing here. Uh, we will take it forward. As a country, we have to apply our mind. Why that uh, lowly paid employees are not willing to go back? And we have given something called BSKY card for 1 crore and 6 lakhs people. And then 10 lakhs for women and 5 lakhs for men every year. Why 10 lakhs for women? Because women's health is neglected. We want to send a message. We care more for the women's health. More importantly, I consider the Orissa model is the equity base. We are, we are industry heavy. We are mineral heavy. We are also growing, but we are very, very particular. We don't forget the distributive justice. The very, very fundamental of the sense of justice is a distributive justice and equity. And we are trying to carry the last mile. We have a separate project called last mile connectivity and all. So having said that, I have taken more than what I expect at the time. Thank you very much for uh, listening to this. We look forward to work uh, hand in hand with the, all the stakeholders to take Orissa forward and 2036 is a magic year. Thank you very much.